thank you all for uh, skipping lunch and uh, coming along to uh, this uh, birds of a feather. Um, so this is a birds of a feather. This is not really a presentation. This is hopefully a dialogue between uh, the members of the audience and maybe me. Uh, so, the basic uh, reason for doing this, or one reason for doing this, is that as AOSP developers, we're a little bit lonely. We don't really talk to each other very much. So, it would be nice um, to get together. Uh, here we are. And just to talk about all the things that really drive us crazy about uh, Android. So, the mic is open. Uh, well, except that we don't actually have a mic, so you'll have to shout. Um, the mic is open to everyone. And agenda. So there isn't really an agenda. It's whatever we choose to pontificate about over the next 40 minutes, I think we have, until um, I think this finishes at 1400. But so these are the kind of things that I think would be interesting to talk about. Um, so first of all, you've heard me talk about this already, community. I really... Um, passionate about the idea. There should be some kind of community behind Android. So I'd like to explore that a little bit. Um, next, where do you find out about Android? Where do you find out about, about AUSP? Uh, is it source.android.com uh, or is it some podcast that nobody else knows about or, or something? Just what are good places to find information about building Android? Um, Anybody want to talk about uh, porting Android to real hardware? So, Matthias and Amit, uh, for example, are giving, or have, in one case, have given a presentation, and in the other case, will give a presentation on that exact subject. <laughs> Which OSP build tag to use? Um, yeah. <laughs> How do you know which build tag is going to be a good one? Um, it's non obvious. Um, what are your main complaints? And I'm going to add another one there, which actually just kind of came to me whilst I was watching um, uh, the pre pre previous presentation, actually, from the guy from Honda. Uh, I'm going to add in there, was Project Treble worth it? Does anybody think, or does everybody think, that Project Treble really worked? So I'd like to go through that a little bit. Um, we're not recording. If anybody could maybe set their phone to record or something, that would be kind of handy. Otherwise, we'll have no record, and this will just disappear into the ether. Do you expect video or audio? Uh, audio will be fine. Okay. Okay. Because the video, I mean, it's just my crappy slide, so it's nothing, there's no, no great loss. Um, <laughs> okay. That's probably a good thing. Um, okay, so... And I did put a pen and some paper in here, and I just seem to have lost both. So, let's get the ball rolling. Unfortunately, we, this being over lunch, a lot of people have disappeared to have their lunch, which is not entirely unreasonable. Um, so we're a fairly select group, but it's great to see every single one of you here. So, first of all, community. Um, Where, where do we go to? Well, no, let's put this another way. How do we create a community around Android? Um, Google do a little bit with their Google Groups and their various outreach programs and so on, but it doesn't kind of gel together. Um, so let's open it out. Anybody have any thoughts about how do we improve the AUSP, the Android platform building community? Amit. Which is Yep. And it also talks about the 
system development community, how can we collaborate? What do we have right now? We have an IRC channel which is somewhat which is somewhat functional. Mm -hmm. We have a GitHub page which is just an information page. It doesn't do anything. It mm -hmm. just lists down the projects, different different IRC projects and devices. But how can we expand it? Mm -hmm. And so we started some uh, around last year at the same uh, time. This is project. I don't know if I should talk now or in my session. <laughs> well, I can talk now as well. So what we just, just, just give us a, a, a quick. So we, are, so we have a project called Devote for Android. OK. It's already hosted on, uh, right now it's on Denado.org. But we have got a feedback that, you know, since Denado is mostly ARM oriented, and there's nothing wrong in accepting that, that we work on open source software for ARM architecture. But if the devboard can be access platform, it can be the Wix file platform. Mm -hmm. So it is there in a small host to come in other mm -hmm. So we are trying to move it to some other neutral place. It could be GitHub, it could be GitLab, mm -hmm. wherever it is. But right now it is on Minaro.org. Uh, we have listed down the device, the devices which we support, which Bailey supports, but these are the devices. These are the links to the resources, the documentation, bio and blog, whatever you need to build the OST for that particular platform. Mm -hmm. So that's how we got started. Mm -hmm. That at least we should have a project that lists down the development devices, which not just work or works once, but it supports OST for the longer run. Mm -hmm. The two years, three years, five years. So Would right now on if you follow CMX community, yep. you get to hear uh, news of at least two SDCs releasing every day with Android support. Mm -hmm. You don't know Android is there. Will it be there in the next six months? I mean, will they upgrade? Will they just stay like this? Or will the project survive? So we want to have, we wanted to have a page or a project which will at least tell you that if you go with these set of devices, uh, I cannot guarantee that, but at least, no, you will get a fairly long support time. For that particular device. That would be great. It could be, it could be phone, it could be any phone for Yeah. I mean, th th there is a whole community based around legacy support for, for phone devices, such as Lineage OS and. Um, something oh, like post market OS. A post market OS, yeah. So something like that I'm trying to. And it would be great to bring them in because, from my point of view at least, I don't communicate with anybody from that kind of custom ROM community. But they have a lot of good resources because they know how to hack uh, Android. They know a lot of stuff. And it would be great to kind of bring them on board as well, alongside the uh, kind of open source hackers like uh, Bay Libra and, and Linaro. Um, yeah, so that's a great idea. Yeah, it would be great to reach out to, uh, to, to, to those guys. I think there are a couple of developers from that particular community who hang yeah. around on IRC channels. If you ask, do you phone specific how to jailbreak it or how to root it? They're quick to respond. Do, do you have, do, do, are you in contact with those people day by day? No, just on the IRC, I think uh, uh, he or she goes by the name of PHH or something like that. Mm -hmm. They tend to be a little bit more um, anti establishment, if, if you might say, than what we are used to. Um, so I reached out a couple of times, and you know, they're a little bit tricky sometimes, in my opinion. But that, that's a great idea. And the, one more yeah, go cool. so on. Um, Andreas. So the, the question here to me is that it has been so, so long, so many years now, maybe more than uh, one decade or something, that Android is around and there is no what we were after right now, which are ecosystems. That's a good point, yeah. Why, why, why are we talking about it after, so Android's been around like 15 years or something? Yeah. yeah. Why hasn't it just happened? Yeah, so, so good question.
safer to send to go off to not be able to go anywhere because actually there's no route to all the banks because we have that huge um, uh, contributor. That's a very good point. Yeah, and I I, I think. Um, a lot of people, myself included, have kind of assumed that, hey, Google are the people here. They should be, we assume, would be the people who be the nucleus of this. But that hasn't really happened because Google's priorities are different to what we want. So, but it's a very good question. If, if it hasn't happened already, why did it not happen? And I've been thinking about this, and, and my response is basically, uh, I've discovered that community doesn't just happen. It requires some leadership and some nucleus to make it happen. And that hasn't existed. Or hasn't been allowed to, to get to this point. Mm -hmm. I don't know about allowed, but it requires someone to step, well, no, it requires a group of people uh, to kind of step up and say, hey, this is the community. I would, I mean, this, this is not me, I'm, 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 not, I'm not the guy to do that, but somebody around here needs to, or some group of people, need to come together and form a, form a, a kind of nucleus, like, um, like AGL, for example. AGL is a wonderfully functional community compared to what we have with Android. So one of the things I, I have on my agenda is to talk to Walt and the other AGL people and say, why does AGL work and, and other things don't? So, yeah, but that's a very good point. Uh, seven. Um, so I guess it's too clear if I can hear to say that you can be on it. So, um, yeah. I'm Sarban. Um, I used to work for R, where I contributed quite a bit to Android, together with some lovely folks, folks here. Um, then I worked for Google up until three months ago. Um, and, and I think to your question uh, and to your uh, thought, I think there is a big community of Android developers. Unfortunately, it's more on the application side. Yeah. Uh, but I think that kind of shows that Android is used in all the form factors everywhere. Everything from like a Peloton to cards to phones to my watch and many other things. And I think historically we didn't really have that sort of community at the system level. Uh, I mean, there are some folks here that I've seen for years at the conferences and Chris and they're pretty much the same folks. Like, uh, I think we've been, we've, we've been in, in similar rooms uh, across the years. And, and I think a key factor to that is that at, at the system level, the Android model has pretty much been um, modify Android as you see fit for your platform and then move on. Uh, and that basically didn't require engagement with, with the community, contributing, doing the good work that uh, Amit and Matthias and many other folks in Vero are doing is giving back to the community those things. Uh, but I, I do think this is time for us to actually think about that because there's a lot of regulation and all sorts of other pressures yeah. that yeah. are going to change that, are going to require these devices to be maintained for longer. And there's no way we could do that without actually contributing and forming that community. Um, and, I, and actually, David and I left Google to try to do that a little bit. Uh, you can see it on my t-shirt, it's easy to remember. It's not source of Android at home, it's source of Dev. Um, but we are trying to, uh, like one of, one of the things we, we realized while at Google and in our experience is that Android is like so big and massive that you kind of need an operating system for the operating system to keep up with like adding Rust, um, adding all sorts of things, bug stable new development models, and many, many other things. Um, and I think it's an opportunity for us to work with the community to do that. Uh, we actually intend to contribute quite a bit uh, to that project, and if anyone here is interested in taking that project together with us, we'd be really, really keen to, to talk to you. Uh, but I do think that the catalyst for changing this community is happening now, and, and it's the fact that we're going to need support devices for longer, and that requires the community, because otherwise we're going to end up with stacks of patches that we're going to have to maintain for every device. Uh, so yeah. I think um, whatever we, we discussed today in, in terms of community, I think um, maybe we can, we can we can figure out together how to get, get together more often. I think Chris is doing that with uh, your meetups, uh, and they're very yeah. well attended. So I, I, I run a meetup group every, every two months. Uh, I think most of the people here are on that group. If not, you definitely should be. 
Um, but yeah, so that, that, that's one thing that, that I did that was basically a, a no-brainer. It was pretty easy to set up a meetup group. I was amazed. I thought nobody would be interested, but we've now got 700 and something members, and it keeps on growing. So that was a good thing to do. Um, so I guess I'm looking for kind of similar things, but also how do we gel the whole thing together? So somebody said to me actually yeah, last night, why doesn't the Linux Foundation do this? Does anybody think LF should be somehow involved in creating a, a, an AOSP community? I think so. It's certainly worth uh, with, with discussing. I can't think if you're allowed to. <laughs> I, I, think I don't see why not. I'm very keen on to like, take a look at GKI. I mean, knows more about GKI than I do, but I've been behind the scenes helping with that. I think GKI is a good as, as de facto standard. I think that Relic needs to get their share in the LF. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe we're not switching models in GKI. There's generic Linux users that Android users. Android does that as well. Yeah, okay. But uh, the way that Android does kernel, um, I think a lot of vendors are doing the same type of kernel for other verticals. And I think there's a lot of feeling today that's actually going in from Android to upstream Linux or other distributions. Uh, and I think cool. Google would be probably keen uh, on, on, on being part of that to some degree, or if not, I don't think they would prevent it. But I, I think LF should sort of figure that. They, they would be a great. Uh, resource for that, yeah. Um, just a matter of interest, I'm doing basically the same thing at uh, Plumbers on Friday. <laughs> so we'll be doing, uh, for those of you attending both conferences, I'm afraid you'll, you'll get something similar, but with a different audience. Okay. Google's going to be there. Google's going to be there. Oh, because you're not Google anymore, are you? I keep forgetting that. Um, okay. Um, I'm going to move on to the next topic. Uh, oh yeah, contributing. Okay, this is kind of related. So the whole point of open source is that it's not just free software. Open source is a two-way street. To make the maximum benefit of open source, you have to contribute. We well, don't have to, but you're, you know, contributing is, is, is the way we, this, this whole thing works. And you can look at, say, Yocto. I, I use Yocto as a good example of this. So Yocto does something vaguely similar to what AOSP does. So it's a build system underneath. And it has a fairly dynamic uh, community based around it. And they get a lot of contributions and so on. So the Yocto model works fine. That, if you, if you then compare that to the AOSP or the Android model, it basically doesn't work. Uh, it's basically download only. And the big blocker there, obviously, is with Google, because Google don't really welcome patches. Um, so. The question then is, how do we get patches into Google? Uh, I guess knowing people in, in the Google development team probably is a big, uh, big plus there. Um, anyone else got any, any, uh, uh, any tricks or clues? How do we get stuff upstreamed into the AOSP code base? This doesn't work for everything, but actually uh, you can see that a lot of, um, a lot of the projects in AOSP are moving to this journal folder. Okay, good. And even like, especially for Rust um, projects, Google <coughs> themselves have been trying to uh, push code out, and then basically AOSP is downstream of the official Rust projects. Um, so it doesn't work for everything, but for the bits that are not hosted only on AOSP, but they're inherited from somewhere else, you can contribute to that upstream project, and then it will appear in AOSP shortly after. Okay, so m moving stuff into external is certainly a great idea because then it's yeah. independent uh, of the, the main Android development. So I mean, there's an example of that is DRM hardware composer, uh, which is an external, and which is DRM H. Uh, upstream. Okay, cool. There are issues, of course, that the external folder, each of the projects in the external folder is basically a fork of the upstream project. So there is a bit of a um, impotence mismatch between the actual open source project and what appears when you download AOSP. It depends. Uh, for, again, for DRM hardware composer, it's just a downstream, so it's a later version of the upstream one. OK, no yeah. Like changes to the language. They, they add the upstream to files, but usually it's, it's pretty much the extender of the 
they might be like a stop action bot that does it that way. Okay, that's cool. Uh, and they've been pretty good at keeping up with the latest. Um, okay, great. But yeah, otherwise, it sucks, right? Like I think because <laughs> you know it's too. Uh, you need two. Uh, yeah, you need two persons working at Google to review your code when you're an external contributor. Yeah. It's difficult to get their attention, and sometimes you don't know who to contact. Uh, some projects are more uh, keen on getting um, contributions than others as well. Can you give a list? For example, in system, uh, system recovery, or the update part, uh, it's a bit easier to contribute than yeah, the yeah. media framework, for example. Cool. Framework is difficult. Framework, the, the yeah. whole framework project yeah. is difficult to get into. Now. Framework, yeah, yeah. Trying to get stuff into framework, I can imagine being quite tricky. Uh, one um, topic that's interested in getting contribution is the Android Common Kernel. So I think that's a good way to. See okay. So Android Common Kernel, yeah. Even system code. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's correct. Usually the projects will try to um, make sure that there's only one standard version that everyone uses. Hmm. There, those teams are used to getting patches from partners, um, so those are more receptive. But uh, something like framework, I'm guessing it's quite difficult to contribute to. Yeah. And probably I've what's worth mentioning is that uh, Android is moving to a new development model. Uh, it's moving away from like the branch-based yeah. development to trunk-based development, yeah. which also means that like what needs to happen behind the scenes is like two or like maybe five months before you see Android 14 going out publicly, uh, we would be under chaos because we would try to stabilize the code base and it was almost impossible to do that. Um, and uh, with Trunk Stable, you actually have an opportunity to continuously contribute to the code base. So that might make it easier as well. Yeah, yeah, so moving to Trunk Stable, although that's been a bit of a pain, uh, but I think that's, that's basically a good idea for sure. Okay. Is it the licensing? No, the, the licensing is, is permissive. You can do whatever you like with, it's mostly Apache 2.0 licensing. So that's not particularly an issue. Um, I mean, a, a lot of projects are based on permissive licenses, including Apache. Um, I mean, pretty much every, everything in the Eclipse Foundation, everything in the Apache Foundation is, is all has similar licenses. So it, it's not the license itself that's the problem. The problem is the gatekeeper is, is Google, and they don't have much incentive for taking patches from downstream, or, well, yeah, from, from developers. Amit? I think the other big factor here with the hardcore developers is the NDA, which you have to sign before submitting the first patch to Rails to get it. I've seen that a few open source developers, a lot of open source developers, who don't live by that idea of signing an NDA before contributing to a particular project. If I wasn't even aware of that, to be honest. So you have to sign an NDA before you can uh, do the first commit, even if it's just a, a, a simple patch. It's not an NDA, it's a CLA. Oh, sorry, yes, sorry, sorry, CLA, yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, yeah. If you sign that thing, actually, what you do is you decide to make sure you don't contaminate the proprietary code that the sales team comes in and covers up. Ah, uh, the proprietary code is completely separate. That is not not the problem as I as I understand it. Um, but yeah, it, 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 is a, it is a barrier. Like I say, if, if, if you are a dyed-in-the-wall open source guy, then signing an, an agreement before you can submit a patch seems kind of wrong, and I, I don't really know. Uh, I don't really know. I don't really think that's a good idea. I think the good problem here, like this problem, is as you said, I think. Same thing was happening with Qt long ago. They had a dual license story where if you had to sign something, you had to commit. Because there was the license with the CT, so there was no difference. Uh, whatever. Uh, 
programmers wanted to give you control, so you have to uh, find guarantees for uh, all those many projects, and it's, so it's not unheard of. Okay, interesting. Uh, just for well, I mean, yeah, Android gets forked a hundred times a day, um, but they will die. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, I'll skip over this one, one fairly quickly. This, this is just a, a blatant plug for uh, the ASP meetup. Good one. Um, okay, next point on my list, and uh, we have about fifteen minutes left. Um, okay, where do you get information about AUSP? Uh, apart from, well, okay. Where do you get information about AUSP? Where, where, where are good sources of information about how AUSP works? Kind of, I'm looking, I'm thinking more about kind of blogs. Um, Michel Rahman has a, a, a very good uh, set of blogs and, and he has been on the, uh, the, the meetup group uh, a little while back and I'll have him back as soon as I can. Um, but yeah, and anyone else? Just briefly, just shout out, where, where, where do you go to find out about uh, AUSP? Just source.android.com. Yes, um, looking at tutorials, looking at the meetup, and looking at colleagues. So a lot of information is from the colleagues around you that are already working on the AUSP. So company, company information, the feedback, the company. <coughs> Cool, that's good. I'm it. Uh, if you are already into AOSP development, then so what I do is I have subscribed to certain projects in Gerrit. Hmm. So you will get emails about every single patch. Okay. So at least for these projects like System Core, hmm. I mean, I should, I mean, System Core is the core part of the low level, uh, you know, uh, it's a very low level project. It affects your, how your kernel is behaving for, from kernel to your user space. So I get, I mean, I keep myself updated from system code changes and cuttlefish changes. Because cuttlefish, based on any system code change, cuttlefish will do a relevant uh, config change mm -hmm. to match with the same feature changes. So, but if you are already into ASP development, then please can you at least subscribe to projects of your choice. Okay, okay. So, and you're recommending the system core and the cuttlefish? Uh, okay. That's good to know. I'll try that. The, the way Sorry? this works for um, smartphone manufacturers, and I think it's all the automotive manufacturers, is there's a thing called Android Bootcamp. Mm -hmm. It happens once a year, uh, where, where Google basically goes into the details of like a product roadmap, and you get to meet the actual team working on that. Sometimes some of those talks are made public. I think the Android Automotive track was made public at some point. Uh, but it's that there's a lot of time, but, but that's actually the best way to keep up with what's happening. Yeah, the, the boot camps. Uh, anybody here been to one of those boot camps? I, I, I personally haven't. Uh, okay, two, three, four people. Um, they, certainly from, from my point of view, they, they are problematic because if, if I were to go to a boot camp, I would have to sign an NDA which then means I wouldn't be able to tell anybody anything I discovered. So the whole thing would be point, pointless to me. Yeah. It kind of goes back to the, I mean, when you were talking about community and kind of how do we uh, reach out to all of the people who work on Android, all of those people are in these, you know, closed organizations yeah. that have access to these closed conferences and they are not allowed to share what they, what they learned there, at least not until the release is out. Yeah. And it, 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 again, it puts a barrier there. People thinking, "Oh, can, can I can I reveal this information? Maybe, maybe yes, maybe no. I'm not quite sure, so I won't say anything." Um, so the I, I, the boot camps, I understand the the the, the reason why, why why Google wants them, but they are problematic from the open source point of view. Actually, fairly simple. So I learned about. Uh, I went to a talk and some conference about how to build Android, and it began with like you get terabyte of disk space and then you <laughs> have to build for twenty hours. 
And yep. then I stopped listening, right? Because this is not reasonable. So. Yeah, but have you tried Yocto? I mean, AGL takes almost as long, doesn't it? Yes, but uh, you, you don't need to, if I contribute to your source, or I don't contribute to your store, it also takes long, but whatever. But uh, if I want to contribute to Shell, Bash, bo Born Again Shell, for example, then I download single package, patch single patch page, and mail and patch back to the maintainer. Yep. I don't think I can do this with Android, right? Because I would uh, have to run this two days build. I can do a single package of, I can do a single Yocto package, modify it, submit patches. I don't need to build whole rest of it. And well, that's because you're running on an Ubuntu or Debian or whatever machine, which so you already have the environment in front of you. Yes. Whereas with Android, yes. and also with other embedded build systems, I, again, Yocto has exactly the same issue. If you want to, if you want to submit a patch to a Yocto project, you're going to have to build probably the yes, entire thing to test it. But uh, the Yocto is from contribution of, of from people who are running Debian. Of course, yes. And that's the point. That's why it works. <laughs> Way better because you don't need to build the world. Yeah, I mean, uh, for sure, the, the, the Android, the requirements of doing an Android build are horrendous, and they're a, they're a big barrier to everybody, including myself. I just had to upgrade my machine to 64 gigs. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so you can do bit bait core image minimal or something. Yeah. And then my new source code was. Well, I mean, Matthias just did a really good presentation explaining how to do exactly the same thing in 15 minutes with the Yocto build. I didn't know that because that's not here today. So, I mean, you can do the equivalent just by building a RAM disk, essentially. Yeah. Um, so, if, if that's what you want, you can do that. Then they should work for that, and that's, I mean, it's not the easiest to get started. Um, I mean, that's a good point. Maybe Matthias or, or whoever should make that information more, more, more generally available. Hey, you can, you can build a really small uh, command line only Android just by the, these commands. Because, I mean, to be honest, when I'm doing something with Yocto, I, I only ever built uh, core image minimal, and if that boots, it boots, and I'm, I'm, I'm on to the next thing. So that's a good point. Amit. Do you have a similar target which does the minimal Android which can boot to shell? Yeah. And as Matthias has pointed out in his talk, you don't have to include all the make files, all the base make files, full base make files. You can go with the minimal set of make files. It makes sense it's like a target uh, which you have to include. So instead of going with the full base, you just go with the minimum make files. Make files it was a long time since I looked at that. <laughs> But, um, so, I mean, I wouldn't know how to do that. And I, I'm, I'm fairly familiar with this stuff uh, off the top of my head. So... But to add one more thing to that, the first stage image allows you to have control from RAM disk. Yeah. So yep. you don't even have to, you know, flash or anything. Yeah. Maybe we should talk more about that kind of stuff. Boot the first yeah. stage image with console support. Yeah. And just do a fast boot boot. Yeah. And it will boot from RAM disk and you can just test your small utilities like yeah. Skybox. Or At least it proves that the kernel boots and, and the bootloader works. And just, I mean, I think historically, just getting a kernel to boot is, is one of the biggest issues we've been doing a board bring up. Once the kernel's running, most of the rest of the stuff is, is relatively straightforward. Okay, um, we've got like five minutes left. Um, I'm going to skip the thing about HP uh, build tags. So the grumpy, de grumpy developer, yeah. So this is, this is your um, uh, beef time. What are the worst things about building with Android? What would you like to get fixed? Or you know, what are the things you keep on uh, tripping over? Yeah, yeah. So Kleef is is a layer on top of Bazel, which is used to build the GKI. Yeah. So I mean, it'd be nice if. 
Um, yeah, I, I, I wish we could telegraph this to the Android devs that, hey guys, we would like a build system with fewer tools. Yeah, that would certainly be good. Um, yeah, I would, if I could just amplify that or, or, or append to that as well, it would be nice if the kernel build was somehow integrated with the, 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 the platform build. Uh, it's kind of annoying that you have to build the two things separately. It'd be nice to be able to do what's one build. And because what really happens is that the SSC um, vendors and whatever, they always come up with their own layer on top of the Android build system, which does some really weird things. Um, so it'd be nice, again, to be a bit more yokta like and actually do the whole thing. Okay, any other grumpy developers here? Kevin. Related, but as a kernel developer, just to be able to replace the kernel without having to do the rest of the, the AOS, it's just more avoiding the AOS build process. I guess. Like, I don't yeah. Know, simply just inject a new kernel. Yeah. Well, he has to go into the boot image file, which means you've got to do the kernel build, copy the kernel image into the AOSP directory, and then do an AOSP build, and then fast boot that. Yeah. I guess it's straightforward, but it's it's two steps in one, instead of one step, I guess. Well, like you said, it's straightforward if you have a pixel. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Okay, this is going really well. Um, have you got? Yeah. Okay. Let's do this. Okay, so call to action then. So we've talked about a lot of problems. Um, so how do we solve them? How do we make things better? What's the, what are the top, I don't know, two, three things we could do to improve our own lives? <laughs> make Android GPL. Well, that's all GPL, that's fine. So uh, Android is actually, uh, uh, is violating GPL, so. No, it is not, that's rubbish. Android is not violating GPL. Um, it would be nice if Android were GPL, but I don't think that's ever gonna happen, for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, okay. So, this is a long term project, but Android just shouldn't exist. It uh, should be a collection of packages Developed in normal way, like we used in the open source, where you know you have different people making in different parts, and then you create a distribution. So you you would like Android to be more like, say, Debian, for example. I, I would like to have Android to become packages in Debian in the end. Yeah. Um, sure. I mean that, that that's a great idea. I would love that too. Um, I can see a couple of problems there. Yeah. It's <laughs> It's a lot of work. Um, the other problem is that this kind of comes back to the, the year of the Linux desktop, which never happened. So we never, ever had a Linux desktop. Yeah, so you use, you use Linux, I use Linux, but nobody else does. Um, and the great success of Android is it has three billion people using Android. So Android is the, is the Linux desktop because it is enforced by Google. So for better or for worse, they have a standard which everybody sticks to. Whereas when you come to, to distros, you've got Debian, you've got Ubuntu, you've got SUSE, you've got Red Hat, and it's, it's chaos. In my opinion. <laughs> I can tell you don't agree with me, but that's right. Then uh, Chromebooks, how is, how is it called over here? Google Chromebooks. Chromebooks, yeah. They have better architecture, right? More modular than Android and so on. That's closer to me, what's closer to this. I, 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 I totally agree with that. It's a pity that Android 
came before Chromebooks. Because if it had come the other way around, Android would, be, would have been built on top of Chromebooks, and it would have been much better architecture. So if you see that I do the, agree with that. The VM is like too fragmented. You may want to just move the Android packages to the Chromebook. Because yeah. Uh, like I just want to run the Android apps. I will try not to run Android, but. No, I, I, I totally agree. No, I, I, that, that would certainly work. Your, your problem now is that Google is basically switching away from Chrome OS, right? They're basically sticking Android in as the base. They are sticking Chrome Android into Chrome. Yeah, I think unfortunately you're, you're right. It really comes down to the fact that Chrome OS had a, a small number of reference points that were supported directly by Google, whereas the Android model allows for you know, much more customization than the partner side. So they're just saying, if we want to like expand the number of uh, hardware platforms that we support, then the Chrome model is the way to go. Probably that comes down to the like how embedded Google system and how structured more than just Google brain on top, but that's just the reality of it. Yeah. Like it comes down to who puts the money into the for the hardware support. So maybe okay. Google what uh, what they really need is some kind of UFI layer. Yes. Where definitely. you just where, where you can just boot the uh, like random Windows on random machine and it should uh, just ARM work. Pieces, yeah. And this like ARM's been trying for I don't know, almost what, ten years now to make that a thing. So Yeah. I think it will gradually come as we I mean pretty soon everything will run on a hypervisor. So you'll just need a hypervisor image for whatever operating system you want, boot into that, into that image, away you go. I mean that's that's the way things are gonna be. Certainly that's the way it's going in the automotive industry anyhow. So we're almost out of time. Uh, Walt, you. I have nothing important to say. Really? I can't believe that. No, I, the only thing I was going to say was I do know some, uh, I'll say, civilians who switched to Linux recently <laughs> on their desktop and have been, have been very happy because they just basically have gotten so annoyed by Microsoft and uh, Windows 11 and all the bloatware being put on by the PC makers um, that they. He said he wouldn't have a problem because he hadn't logged into his Windows system in three months. So I do not. So the, the years of Linux desktop might come yet. <laughs> well, well, let's hope. You never know. So year of the Linux desktop. Yeah. Okay, uh, we are totally out of time here. Thank you all very much uh, for coming along. This has been a fantastically good uh, conversation, I think. Um, so I'm around for the whole week. So. If you want to continue this and with, with any people in this audience, you know, let's keep the conversation going. This is not the end. This is the beginning, guys. But uh, I think I need to uh, disconnect and give space to the next person who gives a presentation here, who is probably going to be Amit. Am I right? Yeah, good. Okay, thank you.